I've been in love with the city of New York probably since I can remember. When I was a little boy in Brooklyn, my parents would take me to Manhattan. Well, I've always found the skyline of New York City a beautiful expression in a very dramatic way of what America is all about. I think the World Trade Center is one of the stronger, bolder symbols of American freedom, and particularly economic freedom. And I like the impact that it had on the New York City skyline. I'd photographed it myself many times. And a couple of times, this was long before I was mayor, I'd actually go out in traffic, which would be a little dangerous, cars would go around me, so that I could just get the exact shot of the World Trade Center. September 11 uh, was supposed to be a fairly quiet day for me. It was a beautiful day. Something that has happened here at the World Trade Center. We noticed flame and an awful lot of smoke from one of the towers of the World Trade Center. My heavens, this is just, just smoke happened. Smoke is within pouring seconds. out. This gash goes from one side of the building practically all the way to the other. We had seen a fireball, and I can tell you it appears tower number two, at least from our vantage point, appears to be unaffected. This appears to be entirely in tower number one. I was told that apparently a plane had hit um, the World Trade Center. And we started driving down Fifth Avenue toward the World Trade Center. We are now looking at flames shooting out of the north side of uh, number one World Trade Center, but there are at least some windows uh, blown out and smoke. Holy shit! Here is another plane oh, just flew into oh, there is an explosion. The explosion is incredible! And then all of a sudden, I saw a, a big explosion of fire. And at that point, we all concluded, obviously, it was, it, was a ter it was a terrorist attack. I think that was the first point at which I realized that we were into something different than any, any of us had ever prepared for, or any of us had ever thought we would live through. I realized I was in some kind of a horrible, awful, horrific human experience. Copy, you have a large crowd here, babies. A lot of babies. You don't see people jumping from the windows like this. And you can actually see bodies falling from the top floors of the World Trade Center. It's horrible here. People are standing in the street in tears. People are panicking and calling their families. A mother described to me talking to her son on the telephone when the second plane hit. And that's the last time she talked to him. Another family described to me how their loved one had let two elevators go because he was older and the people in the elevator were younger. And somehow my, my, my mind went back to the stories and the things you read about the Titanic or you know, people who allowed other people to get on, get on boats and they didn't get on the boat because they were older. And from that moment on, I started thinking that we'll never know all the heroes. We know our uniform people were heroes. They went there and they died and they gave up their lives bravely trying to save the lives of other people. But what we don't know are all the individual stories of 
the person who gave up the elevator for another person, the person who calmed someone and got them out of the building, the person who organized their floor so that everybody could evacuate, the person who maybe at the last, in the last moments uh, comforted people when all of them knew they were going to die. It is fine. Let's get a run. and start to fall. I don't know if it did. I didn't look anymore after that. I turned and I started to run. Everyone ran. People just took off. People ducked into doorways and people didn't stop to look behind. I couldn't breathe at all. It's really hard to talk. I still can hardly see there's so much smoke in This was an attack intended to destroy us because we are a country that's built on principles of freedom because of free will, people get a chance to distinguish themselves. This wonderful American civilization emerges, which isn't based on any ethnic group, it isn't based on any one race, it isn't based on any one religion, it's based on people believing in freedom. Mayor, what's the situation right now? The situation is that two airplanes have attacked, apparently. Why? All right, well then let's get, let's, let's go north then. white smoke racing through the streets. This was the worst, most horrendous fire. And I started thinking about the people that might be trapped. Are there people trapped? If they are trapped, can they survive? And I remember thinking, this, I, this is like being in hell. This, 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 this must be what, what um, Dante would describe as hell. I think we're going to have to remember September 11 in its reality, much the same way as we have to remember other horrific events in our history. Because somehow I think it pushes the human consciousness toward finding ways to avoid this in the future. But if you, um, if you, if you censor it too much, if you try to find too many euphemisms for what happened, then I think you rob people of the ability to actually relive it and therefore motivate them to prevent it from happening in the future. God, it was a huge explosion. Oh, man. I'm sure everybody in the city is coming. There's got to be hundreds of people dead. 
Hey, Dad, it's Kim. I just wanted to let you know that I'm fine. So please do not worry. I'm afraid to call Mom. It's only 8.50 in the morning. Um, I'll call her in about half an hour. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. I think it just happened. You look for La Torre Gemela, Rachel. Let's see. How many people are dead, do you think? Hundreds. We've got to get to a radio. Hey, Grandpa. I'll tell you what woke me up. They bombed the World Trade Center. I'm looking at it, Meek Young's videotaping it. Terrible, I heard, Grandpa, I saw it. It could have been a plane, but I think it was a bomb, a, a missile. Uh, this could be World War III. I don't know, Grandma. I, how early it just happened, three minutes ago. Police saw a plane crash into uh, the World Trade. described to me the size of a 747. I was having breakfast with an old friend. There was a, a primary election that was going on. I picked up my cell phone immediately, called the mayor's security team. So he said, Patty, this is Joe Loda. Are you, how close to the mayor are you? I told the security guys to get close to him, that there had been an explosion at the World Trade Center. And I was on East River Drive, noticed some smoke, and said to my driver, maybe we have a job, or do you think that's a cloud? And he said, no, that's absolutely a job. I said, um, we better go down there right away. We better just head right down there and get the details on the way down. And as we're getting closer and closer and closer to the tower, we realize that it's more and more serious. We try to make the best assessment of the situation as far as the rooftop conditions that we had. And unfortunately, it was littered with uh, all sorts of antennas and cables. And we told them at this time we couldn't get on the roof. We made a close approach towards the top of the building. I could actually look over and I remember an arm and a partially obscured face peering out of the smoke. I was waving a white towel. And it, it was nothing we could do. I love you so much. 